Hello everyone and welcome back to Plain Talk. I'm your host AJ Rivera and today we are once again joined by Provost Dr. Bill Hargrave. Dr. Hargrave, welcome to the show. Thanks AJ, glad to be here. Thanks for having me, having me back. <laughs> so as the Provost, you serve as Auburn's uh, Chief Academic Advisor. Um, now that we're coming up, we are quickly approaching the one year uh, anniversary of COVID-19 being in America and being in the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. How has your office changed and how does it look now compared to a year ago? Well, you know, it's interesting, AJ. I was talking to a group yesterday and, you know, one year ago today, you know, who would have thought that this would, would be the environment we find ourselves in? You know, we were entering a, a new semester in a new decade, right? And uh, everything was going great and then COVID hit. And, you know, it, it really has forced us on the academic side to do some things that we've never really done before. And you think about, you know, on March 13th of last year, we made the decision, that was the last day of spring break, as many of our, our students will remember who were here last year, last day of spring break, we said, when you come back from spring break, don't come back. <laughs> we're going to be remote. And... Um, we transitioned, you know, here at the university, um, about 2,000 faculty and about 5,000 classes remote, in, just like that, with 70% of the faculty who had never taught a, a remote class before, and, and a lot of our students who had never taken a remote class before. And of course, that then started, you know, this whole transition of living in the COVID world. It's interesting that you bring up, the, and, and it's true, the fact that uh, Auburn University decided to move to online at the end of spring break. Now, students, if they were to look at the academic calendar, they'll see we're not getting a spring break this year, this semester. Yeah. Rather, we're getting three wellness days. That's right. What went into making that decision? You know, I, I, I know the students wanted a spring break. Look, we, we all wanted a traditional spring break. But when we had to make that decision for the calendar, which was back uh, in the fall semester, uh, at that time, and even right now, it's just not wise to uh, be in a situation where people are out, they're, where they're traveling, and then coming back to campus. That we know from the fall semester, and we know from what, we saw, what we've seen across the country at college campuses, if we can get our students here, and we can keep them around campus and keep them in the area, it's much safer on everyone. And so we made the decision to eliminate that spring break where everybody would be going off somewhere else and perhaps bringing the, the virus back to campus. And instead, having uh, some one day break every three weeks, uh, a wellness break, just to take a mental break from the studies. Because we, we know it's, it's very taxing uh, in, in this situation. So we, we had to do something. That also kept us on schedule to start the semester uh, a few days later than we normally would, but finish when we originally scheduled um, to finish. In making these plans, uh, how closely has your office been working with Dr. Cam and the Auburn University Medical Clinic? Oh, uh, we talk to Dr. Cam all the time. I mean, we have to take the advice from Dr. Cam and the medical community you know, we're in constant com uh, conversations with Dr. Kim, his staff, uh, the East Alabama Medical Center, with Scott Harris from the Alabama Department uh, of Health. You know, we, we really, we have to listen to the medical professionals to inform us so that we make good decisions. You know, because when we entered this, AJ, back on March 13th, you know, we set out three priorities that were gonna guide our decisions. First priority and foremost was the health and safety of our, of our students, faculty, and staff. The second one was to continue to pursue our mission to keep our students progressing toward their degrees. And the third was to be in a collaborative decision-making and transparency in our communication. So in an email that was sent out um, to staff and faculty, uh, it stated that the university will resume full on-site campus operation starting Monday, February 8th. Now, what does this mean for Zoom uh, classes versus in-person classes? So what that means is when, when we um, loaded the spring schedule, which we did that back in November, I believe, we put uh, on each class section 
the way a class would be delivered. And, and that essentially falls into whether it's going to be face-to-face -face or online. Now, when we started, so, so students could, could see how a class was going to be delivered when they signed up for it. And, and we wanted that because we wanted students to be able to make that choice because we know some students for some classes wanted online. So we wanted to make sure that was an option. And we had faculty who wanted to teach online for the spring. Now, fast forward to the start of the semester and the numbers uh, in the US, in the state, in the area were not good. So we gave faculty who were teaching face-to-face -face the option to start the semester remotely if they, if they chose to do so. And, you know, by our estimate, I think about half the faculty who were planning to teach face-to-face -face went ahead and took that remote option, at least for the first week, for the first couple of weeks. And we know, we know some faculty have already brought them back face-to-face. -face. But the, the email you're referring to is, we, we actually communicated this last week, the, the remote option for those who are face-to-face -face, um, will, will uh, end on February 7th. On February 8th, we need to be back the way we expect to be in the classroom. Now, you said that about 50% of uh, in-person classes chose to start off online. Mm -hmm. Can you give us about a rough breakdown of what percentage of classes are fully online versus classes that have at least some form of in-person element? Yeah, so, so um, when we loaded the, the class schedule uh, again last November, uh, 72, about 72% uh, were scheduled to be face-to-face. -face. So about 28% were going to be online. Um, now, I know last semester and obviously last spring, final exams were all administered remotely. Mm -hmm. What is the university's current plan for final exams for this semester? Final exams will be as uh, we, we would in any typical semester. The, the difference between the two, uh, one is, you know, we, we were listened to medical professionals last year when we were planning our fall uh, calendar, which we had to do in the summer, and we knew that our students would be taking a break at Thanksgiving, right? We, we were not going to keep our students here through, through Thanksgiving. So again, to reduce that possibility that our students went home for the holidays and then came back to campus and perhaps carried the virus with them, then we made the decision that once we broke for Thanksgiving, we would not reconvene on campus. We don't, we don't have that break in the spring. As we talked about, we don't have the spring break. So we just uh, go ahead and, and continue the semester as we normally would and have finals as we normally would. Now, a few weeks ago in a faculty senate meeting, there was, to, there was scheduled to be a vote of no confidence, uh, but that ended up not going through, and there seems to be a lot of confusion about that. Can you tell us how are current relationships between your office and the faculty? I, I'd, I'd say the, the relationships are fantastic. Um, you know, this, this vote of no confidence was brought forth by uh, a petition that I understand was signed by uh, 51 faculty, which is, uh, it requires 50 signatures to call a special meeting. And, and in true shared governance and faculty voice, uh, the, the, the Senate uh, Executive Committee called that special meeting. 1,300 people uh, or so were on that meeting, and, and their voices were heard, and they, they voted to dismiss that motion of a vote of no confidence before it was ever brought to the floor. Uh, I, I, I really view that as a, as a, uh, a great relationship between uh, the, the, the central administration and our faculty because our faculty voice was heard a and our Senate executive team has done a great job uh, of trying to steer the Senate and the faculty through this very, very trying time. I mean, there is no playbook. And so, look, we're, we're doing the best we can to get through this. And, and yes, it was uh, a bit unsettling to, to have that. But it, uh, again, faculty voice was heard and I'm so thankful for that. Now, I'm not sure if you are aware of this or not, but there was a movement started by the students uh, on social media, particularly on Snapchat, uh, who were supporting you and calling for that vote of no confidence to be thrown out. What does the support of the student body mean to you? Well, it, it's, it's very important, and I, I was not aware of that, that movement, so uh, it's, it's very nice to hear that. And, and you know, AJ, when we were, when we were looking at at spring semester and what do we do in the spring semester you know we learned 
a lot from the fall. We learned that, that we could be safe on campus. In the fall, we had no documented cases of the virus being transmitted in the classroom or the labs. And our, our ability to keep the campus safe really, uh, it informed our decision for spring to, to bring more face-to-face uh, uh, -face classes uh, to campus. And we also heard from a lot of students and, I, and I've spent time talking with our Student Government Association and many students who, who have written to me just asking, can we get back into the classroom? And, and again, I'll go back to those three priorities. If it's safe, yes. And we felt like from the fall semester and our experience there, we could bring uh, people back safely. So uh, look, I, I, I tell you, AJ, it's been fantastic the first three weeks of the semester. And I've sp I spend time every day walking around campus. It is so fantastic to see our students back on campus and, and smiling. Although it's hard to see the smiles through the mask, you can see the smiles in the eyes and it's, it's, it's very heartwarming. Now has your office started planning on what the next semester in, coming up in the fall is going to look like? We have, yeah, I'm glad you asked. Actually that we were talking about that earlier today, visiting with our Senate uh, representatives and you know, at this point, everything, uh, all indications would be that, that fall should be, um, as far as classroom capacity wise, should be back to normal. Now, uh, it's likely that we may be still wearing masks, but as far as getting back in the classroom, we, we should be back to somewhat normal then. Summer's going to look a little different, I think, because we, we, we still won't be, uh, have the vaccine um, uh, for everybody, I think by uh, by the start of the summer, but so, so summer may look a little different. But AJ, one of the things we learned from last summer was that students really liked the online options for summer classes, and so we're actually going to uh, increase our typical uh, offering of online classes in the summer because that's what students told us. Hey, they like those online classes in the summer because they can go out, be working, have an internship study abroad and, and still be taking some classes here. So we, we heard that from the students and we're going to respond accordingly. Is there anything else that you would like to add? You know, AJ, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm so proud of Auburn and all, our Auburn students and the entire Auburn community that how we've been able to handle this. And uh, I just got off a call with, with uh, our SEC provost. Uh, we meet every other week. And I tell you, we, we just came through this so well, but, but we're not out of it yet. We really need everybody to follow the safety protocols. And you're going to see over the, the next week or so, lots of signage across campus about wear your mask. We really need everybody to wear their mask. Let's keep these, the, the spread down. We can keep the spread down. We can stay here on campus. If it gets out of control, then we'll have to look at alternatives. But wear your mask, social distance when you can, do your part. Thank you, AJ. Well, thank you, Dr. Hargrave, for coming down here. That is all the time that we have today for Plain Talk. Uh, Dr. Hargrave, thank you. This has been absolutely wonderful, and you've given us a lot of information, and you've given especially the students a lot of information. Thank you, AJ. War Eagle. War Eagle. And to everyone watching us, make sure to stay safe. Follow us on all our social media at Eagle Eye TV, and check out our website at eagleeyeauburn.com. I'm AJ Rivera, and War Eagle.